Today we're swapping Kyrie and Steph's careers, which means Kyrie spending over a decade in the Bay, while Steph will change teams multiple times. If one thing's for sure is that NBA history will never be the same. Our first change occurs in 2009, where the Golden State Warriors select Kyrie Irving. And while he's kicking off his career in the NBA, Steph's currently a senior in high school. And while he'll surely have his time very soon, let's focus on Kyrie for now. His rookie year was nothing short of expectations, seeing him average 17 points and 5 assists. But although he had a good start to his career, Blake Griffin would have an amazing one running off with the Rookie of the Year award, and to make matters even worse, the Warriors only won 30 games and missed the playoffs by far. And unfortunately in the following season, even with Kyrie taking a 5 point per game leap, he once again missed the playoffs. But while he was struggling with the Warriors, Steph was taking over college basketball. He'd have an amazing freshman season and capped it all off by winning a national title. It's no surprise Cleveland picked him first in hopes to save their franchise. And of course, Steph will join the association, setting teams on fire from day one. With him having the keys to the Cavaliers offense out the gate, there should be no surprise that he won Rookie of the Year. But although he had free roam on the court, that's only because his team was garbage. Cleveland finished 2012 with one of the worst records in the league. But on the other side, the Warriors would make the playoffs. However, in the first round, they're facing the Lob City Clippers, and this series was nothing short of a beating. Chris Paul was simply unmatched in the pick and roll, leading to the Clippers winning in five. And that sends us off to 2013, where both young point guards are beginning to find their identity. Steph's averaging 30 as he dragged the Cavaliers behind to the playoffs. Whereas Kyrie is developing nicely alongside his splash bro Clay Thompson. And in the loaded Western Conference, 49 wins is only enough for a 7th seed, where they matched up against Kobe and the Lakers. And while being one of the best upcoming teams, the Warriors can't even compare to the amount of star power the Lakers possess. So despite winning two games, Los Angeles won four. As for Steph's journey, his first ever playoff series puts him up against Derrick Rose, a player who's funny enough his complete opposite. While Steph relies on his long range shooting, Derrick Rose excels at finishing at the rim in traffic. The Bulls also have considerably more depth than the Cavaliers, leading to a very lopsided series. Steph's first playoff run was already over. His lack of help is very apparent, and for him, the 2014 season would be one we've already seen before. He improved to 34 points a night, but Cleveland as a whole regressed and missed the playoffs entirely. This makes us all wonder, is Steph cut out to lead his own team? His story up until this point has been very bittersweet, but Kyrie's is taking an uphill drive. His stats were just short of 30 and 9, while also guiding Golden State to a 60 win season, the first in franchise history. And heading into game 3 against the Phoenix Suns, they were already up 2 0. But late in the fourth quarter, Kyrie would take a hard fall, and this would set him out for the rest of the playoffs. Luckily enough, Clay would step up, and his shooting was enough to get the Warriors past the Suns in 6 games. But in the second round, it would be a much different story because Drew Holiday would lock up Clay this entire series. And on offense, Anthony Davis would take over. A once promising season had turned problematic in the blink of an eye. Neither Steph or Kyrie have had deep playoff runs, but that's all about to change. The moment LeBron's decision was revealed just before 12:30 this afternoon, fans downtown around the queue went into a frenzy. Welcome back home! Oh, yeah. Welcome back home! Welcome home, LeBron! Forming what could possibly become the greatest duo in sports history. In just their first season together, the Cleveland Cavaliers won 41 more games than the previous season, going 69 and 13 while putting the association in a chokehold. They began the playoffs by beating the Milwaukee Bucks, but Kyrie and the Warriors are facing the historical Spurs dynasty. And while this reaching its end, it isn't over just yet. Games 1, 2, 3, and 4 would see the home team winning every time. And while this series is a stalemate, someone eventually has to take over and win the series. And in Game 5, the Spurs did exactly that with Kawhi leading the way, taking a 3-2 lead. Kyrie's facing elimination. But when it mattered most, he'd have a complete meltdown. He'd go on to shoot 6 of 20 from the field, including a 3 for 12 slump from downtown. While Clay would make up for the silence of Kyrie, it wasn't enough to beat the defending champion Spurs. After this last game, we all have to ask, is Kyrie a playoff choker? Well, that'll be answered in the future. But for now, let's head back to Cleveland where they're facing Chicago. And here, Steph has a chance for revenge. Because if you remember, the Bulls beat him two years ago in 
the first round. So with an opportunity this sweet, not only would he dominate, but he was also assisted by his great teammate LeBron James. And when you're facing two players of this caliber, it's hard to even win one game, something the Chicago Bulls would not. After pulling off back-to-back -back sweeps, Steph's now on the way to his first conference finals appearance. But let's be honest, a duo of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan flops in comparison to LeBron and Steph. And don't forget they also have Kevin Love, an all-star power forward who widens the gap between these teams even more. So yes, this series would end in 6, with Cleveland heading to the NBA Finals. And here they'd meet one of the young premier teams in the league, the Oklahoma City Thunder. With Russell Westbrook's nasty finishing at the rim, paired with KD's insane shot creation, they'd actually upset the Cavs in Game 1 on the road. If there's one team out west that can beat the Cavaliers, then it's definitely OKC. And over the next three games, they'd go back and forth, coming out to a 2-2 series tie. Both teams were playing hard and refused to give the other an upper edge. But remember when a seven game series is tied 2-2, the team that wins game five usually wins the entire series. So with that being said, the Cavs need this one. Luckily, they have home court advantage and will put it to use taking a 3-2 lead. They just need a single win, and late into game six, they had the chance to do just that. Steph coming off a screen, he gets some space, driving it, takes a floater, and it's blocked by Russell Westbrook. Robeson drives it down, pulls up, passes it down to Kendrick Perkins, takes a layup, and he makes it over Anderson Vera. Steph being double teamed, LeBron is open, LeBron is wide open, LeBron is wide open, what are we doing? Ball to Steph, he's on the wing with Russ guarding him, driving it, having a little trouble. Steps back. What are we doing? What is his offense? Please. And he makes it. Yes, yes, yes. He makes the layup. And after that insane clip floated by Anderson Vergeau, that leaves OKC with less than seven seconds to make a shot. KD with the ball on LeBron, stepping it back. Three seconds left. Just play defense, please. KD miss. Please miss. Please miss. And on that note, Steph's become the first one to win an NBA championship. But despite him beating Kevin Durant right now, don't forget that he'll soon be on the Warriors and flip the entire league upside down. So if Steph wants to stay ahead, then he has to make sure he goes back to back in the 2016 season. And somewhere in Cancun, Kyrie was heated by the fact Steph had one up to him. Luckily, his supporting cast was starting to peak, with Clay averaging 28 points on 45% from three, and Draymond turning into a walking triple double. But we also can't forget about Kyrie himself, averaging an outlandish 32 points per game on the best team in the West. This outstanding season cemented his name in NBA history, as he would take home the 2016 MVP. The one thing that would improve this season would be a championship, but that'll surely be tough to pull off. Luckily, the first round would see him playing the Minnesota Timberwolves, a very young and inexperienced team. But in the second, they're facing James Harden and the Houston Rockets, coached by Mike D'Antoni, who prefers quick scoring and ISO basketball. And up until this point, it worked to a high degree. But facing a team like the Warriors, one that generates points at an even higher level, this series would be much less competitive than either you or I expected. Despite Harden's at least scoring throughout these four games, that's lamentably all the Rockets had going for themselves, which means the Warriors are heading to the Western Conference Finals, where we're facing the San Antonio Spurs once again. Just last season, the Spurs sent us packing in six games, but we have to remember Tim Duncan's growing older by the day, and at this point in time, he's already 40 years old. So yes, this time it would be different, and the Warriors are pulling off yet another sweep. This points us to the NBA Finals, where Kyrie's just four wins from his first NBA championship. But just on the other side remains his rival Wardell Stephen Curry. Back to defend their title, Cleveland is just as motivated heading into the series. And of course, they would have home court advantage, taking game one after a 26-point triple double by LeBron James and a 31-point outing from Steph. This game was nothing sort of historical, as the duo of Akron born stars are showing off just how dominant they can be together. But Kyrie's not letting just one game shake his confidence, as he came out in game two with playing Draymond on his side ready to rumble. And they would do more than that, not only winning game two, but using this drive to win two more as well, as the team Golden State was on another level. And from the looks of it, they'll be closing this series out soon. In all of NBA Finals history, no team has ever come back from being down 3-1. to one. So what are the chances the Cavs will be the first ones to do it? Well, at home for Game 5, Cleveland will keep their series alive, taking a much-needed win and giving themselves some hope. And while Kyrie doesn't feel he's in danger, he definitely will be if the Warriors manage to drop the next one. The stakes are very high for both teams, coming down to the last minute in Game 6. 
Harrison Barnes, what type of shot is that? I'm not sure what he's doing. Okay. Instead of taking the screen from Kevin Love, he's driving it. He passed down to Kevin Love, goes up the layup, and the layup is good, giving the Cavs a two-point lead. Ball into Kyrie Irving, drives it on Steph Curry. He's getting a little rough here, you know. A lot of people in the paint. He misses the layup. Okay, the Cavs have a chance to come back and extend their lead. Steph with Harrison Barnes guarding him. He's getting a little bit physical, but it's okay. Steph can handle this for sure. And he's calling for a screen for Tristan Thompson, who's driving it down. Kick and roll, ball, floater, and he extends the lead to four points. Okay. Now, can the Warriors answer, or will the Cavaliers be forcing a game seven? Let's find out right here. Kyrie getting sworn, balled into Harrison Barnes. He misses the layup, and they're gonna play the foul game. Okay. And from there, the game was already over, meaning Steph and the Cavaliers are forcing a game seven in the 2016 NBA Finals. And with about a minute left in game seven, the series is still undecided. I'm gonna call for him a play to get a screen on the left side. He drives it, driving lay, and the floater is good, making the three-point game with 50 seconds on the clock. Now, can the Warriors get a bucket? Let's see. Kyrie driving it on Steph once again. Gets to a spot in the paint, and it's blocked. Okay. Pass it for the Cavaliers. LeBron play on him. Floater, and he misses. Oh, my God. What is LeBron doing? The Cavs. Oh, okay. Kyrie loses the ball. This is a very back-and-forth game. Play guarding Steph Floater, and it's a one-point game with 20 seconds on the clock. They're going to have to foul. Livingston going to the line, I believe. No, they actually had one foul to give. Okay. And there, Clay's on the line this time, makes the first. And as for the second, it's good. Okay. Steph with Kyrie guarding him. He's taking the two for some reason. I'm not sure why he's driving it at this time, but uh, he's taking, he made the shot. Okay. Free throw number one is good. Okay. And as for the second, it's good as well. Ball is going back with the devil of a Dova. Is he going to get the ball to Steph? Ball to J.R. Smith pulls a three, and he knocks it down time the game with eight seconds left. Steph playing some actually solid defense. Ball to Clay Thompson. Pump fake, pump fake. Pulls it, and they're going to overtime in the game seven of the NBA Finals. And here the Cavaliers will pull away, taking a substantial lead, and giving the Warriors less than 18 seconds to figure things out. Oh my god, Kyrie pulls up a three. And he, oh my god, he knocks it down. More free throws for Delhi. It's the first one's good. And the second one, is he gonna make this one as well? Probably so, and yes, he does. Um, gives the ball to Clay. Pull up three. Another three by the Warriors. Oh my god, they're gonna walk the lead down, huh? I don't think he's missing one yet. So the sixth one, I believe, in the clutch is for Delhi. The sixth one, I think he's hit. Ball to Kyrie once again, pushing the pace up the court. He's gonna actually hold the ball this time, I believe. Oh, Murray space a deep three. And with that, the Cleveland Cavaliers have completed a three to one comeback. That gives Steph his second championship, while Kyrie's officially earned the title playoff choker. And while his legacy is currently tarnished, he's gaining a teammate who doesn't mind ruining his own out of shot for a couple titles. I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am. And with the addition of KD, the Warriors have obviously become championship favorites. But in the eyes of many fans, they've also become the villain. This is the last time I ever want to see 35 on my jersey. Block you on that is the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. But despite the many critics, when June came, the Warriors were back in the finals. And of course, we're getting a rematch with Steph and LeBron looking for three in a row. So you know they came out scorching, winning both games one and two, which gives them a 2-0 lead in the 2017 NBA Finals. But of course that lead wasn't safe at all, as the Dubs would tie this series back at home. And while it had been close till this point, Kevin Durant would take over in Game 5, giving the Warriors a 3-2 lead. And you know back at home in the Bay for Game 5, the Slim Reaper would put this series to rest, meaning they just won 4 in a row and shut down the Cavs' hopes of a 3 P. This gives Kyrie his first championship, and it also ends Steph's time in Cleveland, because it's now time for his short stint in Boston. And with him leaving LeBron and the Cavaliers, this means no one can put a stop to KD, Kyrie, and the Golden State Warriors. But maybe there's a chance, and if Steph can get to the finals, then who's to say he can't upset the Warriors? But before he gets there, he'll be facing his former team in the Cleveland Cavaliers, and if anyone in the league knows his game, it's definitely LeBron. So even with the Celtics having home court advantage, it'd get cut in half by Cleveland. And then to make things worse, the Cavs would keep winning and take a 3-1 lead. Boston simply had no answer for LeBron James, and when it came down to it, they were facing a loss at his hand. But if we're being realistic, then any team coming from out the East was only fighting to come in second place. 
because as expected the Warriors are back in the finals and in the end nothing would be changing. Kyrie now has two championships of his own, wiping away the fact he was a known playoff choker and tying Steph when it comes to rings. And with one last season with Kevin Durant on the roster, it makes us all wonder can he do what Steph couldn't and win three championships in a row. That brings us to the 2019 season, where Boston's young stars of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are developing quite nicely alongside Steph Curry. They pick right back up where they left off, winning 61 games and eventually ending up back in the Eastern Conference Finals. And they're facing the Toronto Raptors, who at this point in time retooled around Kawhi Leonard. But just like the year prior, the Seas are sending home the Raptors. And here we are back in the finals once again, as both Steph and Kyrie are looking for their third championship. But one team was clearly better than the other, and that would obviously be the Warriors who take a 3-1 lead. And with them playing game 5 at home, they'd close it out in the bay and complete it the 3P. This means he's passing Steph with about half a decade left to play. And speaking of decades, Steph began the 20s making his move to Brooklyn and brought Kevin Durant along with him. This wouldn't only make Brooklyn contenders, but it also affects the Warriors just as much. And after a long season plus a change of scenery, Golden State looks completely different. But despite being an AC, they'd still give the Clippers a load of problems. The series would be neck and neck, with both teams going blow for blow until eventually we reach the game 7. In case you forgot, the Warriors are still 3 time defending champions with about 25 seconds left to defend their throne. A 3 point game, 25 seconds left Kyrie in traffic, let's see what he does with the ball, step back into the crossover, drives it all the way, pump fake gets his man in the air, floater, and he makes the floater off the glass, still a 1 point game though. Let's see he made the first free throw and as for the second, will he make this 3 point game again? Yes. He will. 15 seconds left. The ball is gonna go to Kyrie. I assume those going to clay in the corner. Turn around. I think it's a long two. Is it a long two? Yep, it's a long two. Okay, that's tough. And Kyrie just fouled out. Okay. And to make it a three point game once again, let's see. Yep, and Golden State has no more timeouts left. No Kyrie Irving. They do have Jordan Poole in the game, though. Let's see what he does. Ball to Andrew Wiggins. A long three. I'm not sure why he took that shot, but uh, I think this game is over. And with the Warriors season coming to an end, it's time we focus on Brooklyn. They began the playoffs by sweeping the Cleveland Cavaliers and then used that momentum to take down a prime Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid duo. They seemed to be unstoppable, at least until they ran into the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis was playing on another level, and despite the Nets having more than enough size, it didn't matter as he would power through any defender sent his way. But just as Brooklyn couldn't put a stop to him, the same could be said about Curry and Durant. With two completely different styles of play, they would seem to cancel each other out, which would lead to a a very competitive series heading all the way into a game seven but once the series reached its conclusion it wouldn't end up being close at all and the nets are going to the nba finals which puts them up against the los angeles lakers led by lebron james and anthony davis these two have been dominating since the bubble started and that will continue into the finals with them taking a two to one lead in such a neutral environment, it's truly up for the better team to win. And LeBron is of course serious about winning his fifth championship, especially against his former teammate Steph Curry. So of course, the Lakers will go up 3-1, and it's looking like this series is over. But if there's anyone you shouldn't count out, then it's definitely number 11. He'd take over the series, and Brooklyn wouldn't win just game 5, but they still game 6 as well and force a game 7. With only one more remaining, will Steph once again complete a 3-1 comeback, or will LeBron finally close out this series? Well, whichever way it goes, we'll know in about 3 minutes. AD screening for LeBron, LeBron takes the screen, driving it on Kevin Durant, spin move, oh my god, that was a beautiful finish. Spencer Dinwiddie driving out to Marcus Cousins in the paint, that was a terrible shot, but luckily he gets fouled. The first free throw was up, and it's in, and now for the second one, is he gonna hit this one, yes he does, making it a one point game. Ball to AD up top, swings it to LeBron on the other side of the court, backing down KD in the post once again. Is he gonna get physical? Yes, he is taking a post fade, and he's still gonna leave the three points. Then we screen by Jared Allen. Crazy layup right there. Thankfully, he got fouled. More free throws. The first one is good. And the second one is up. And he knocks it down as well. The Lakers do have a nice little size advantage. I will admit that. Here we go. LeBron driving it once again on Kevin Durant. He's been taking him down there the whole time. Crazy floater. And somehow, he hit that ridiculous layup. Okay. 
We haven't seen Steph or KD do much as of right now. Let's see Steph working down Razan Rondo. Ball to KD. KD passes it back to Steph, who passes it to Spencer Dinwiddie, who's been cooking currently off straight free throws. More free throws coming up for him, by the way. Let's see. Once again, he's shooting free throws. He has 30 points, by the way, which is actually insane. Imagine being saved in the finals by Spencer Dinwiddie, of all people. That's kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Lakers still up one with LeBron working KD once again. Back to the post ball to AD. Mid range pull up and he misses it, giving the Nets a chance to come down and actually take the lead. KD with LeBron guarding him. This time he pulls up for the close shot and he makes it, making it a one point Nets lead. He's just dribbling right now. He's not taking a shot. Spinning, driving it on KD again. Floater, layup, whatever you want to call that, and he misses it. Now, can the Nets extend the lead will be the big question here. Pull up mini by KD. He misses it as well. Oh, they got a blocky foul on KD, so LeBron is going to get some free throws. And we all know LeBron to be not the greatest free throw shooter of all time, but let's see. The first one is off. Okay. And now for the second to tie the game, potentially it's up, and he knocks that one down, tying the game at 125 each. And in arguably the biggest possession in Steph's career to this point, he has one final chance to put this game away for good. Six seconds on the clock. Steph working Rondo. Rondo plays some good defense. Oh, ball. It is. Oh, my God. He made that. He actually made that. And while this gives Brooklyn a two-point lead, something you should never do is count out LeBron James. There's two seconds left on the clock. Lakers ball. Let's see who is going to get the ball for this final shot. LeBron gets it, pulls it, and he knocks it down, tying the ball game. And that shot sends us to overtime, where the game will remain more than close. Then we on the drive. Corner ball to Jared Dudley for open three, and he knocks it down, making it a one-point game. Now, Steph probably fouled out, but KD is still here for the Nets. Let's see what LeBron does. Blob to AD, making the lead back to three for the Lakers. And KD isoing LeBron this time, steps back. Ball is going to Dinwiddie for an open three, and he misses it wide open. Okay. Lakers with the chance to extend their lead, potentially on this shot by Kyle Kuzma, and he knocks it down. Let's see, working LeBron in the post on AD, he misses it. And he brings the ball to court ball back to Kaku. Another shot on Jared Dudley, and he gets the and one in the clutch. Of course, free throw it's up, and he makes the lead eight points. And that would be the dagger, with the Nets being unable to recover, and LeBron winning his fifth NBA championship. Which means Kyrie will maintain his 3-2 lead, but that may not be for long, as halfway through the 2021 season, the Nets made a trade to acquire James Harden from Houston. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's finals or bust. And while this adds a ton of pressure to Steph, Kyrie will be the one struggling. All season long, the Warriors battle for a playoff spot, eventually ending up sixth, where they'd face the Clippers once again. Only this time, the Dubs were the ones coming out on top. But next in line is the Memphis Grizzlies, who'd send them home very quickly, marking what officially could be the end of the Warriors dynasty. But out east, the Nets aren't in the best position either. Just like in the bubble, they're deadlocked in a series against the Milwaukee Bucks. And as they say, history repeats itself. These two teams would once again be heading into a game seven, which this time would actually be close. Okay, they ball down to Giannis with KD guarding him. They're gonna send a double, okay. Taking a double again. He's still not gonna pass the ball. Okay, passes to Bobby Portis. Long two-pointer and he knocks it down. Okay, three-point game. James Harden playing ISO ball right now, driving it. Goes for the floater, it's blocked. Rebound by Blake Griffin. Ball back to James Harden. Pump fake, gets his man in the air. Step back. Oh my God, what are they doing? What offense is this? Five seconds on the clock. Ball to James Harden once again. Takes a step back, pulls from Yucatan, and he misses a wide, not a wide open three, but he hits the three-pointer. 21.4 left on the clock. The Bucks are down three and with the ball. Let's see, who is the ball gonna go to? Pat Connaughton and ball to Giannis. Man, that makes a lot of sense, but I need a three-pointer. I need a three-pointer right here. So we have Giannis working on KD. Double teaming him. Oh my God, wide three for the corner. Pat Connaughton from three, and he knocks it down. He knocks down the three. James Harden playing ISO ball once again. Takes a screen from Blake Griffin. Pulls a mid. He had an open lane. He knocks down the mid range though. We'll take it, we'll take it. Two and a half seconds left. Who's the ball gonna go to this time? Drew Holiday is Giannis. Is it gonna be Brick Lopez? Pat Connaughton. Okay, pulls a three and oh, no way he just hit that shot. There's literally no way he just hit that. And yes, you saw that correctly. This shot was single-handedly in the Nets Harden experiment, where he would soon be dished out to Philly. 
This leaves Steph with KD for one last season before he'll be heading out to Dallas and pairing with Luka. And for Kyrie, the past couple of seasons have been very lackluster. With both point guards having something to prove, the 2022 season is one that'll define their legacy. Kyrie in particular is having a great season, averaging 27-8 while getting the Warriors back to a top playoff seeding. And this revival of the team wouldn't end there as they're heading back to the Western Conference Finals. It's been a couple of years, but they're finally back in familiar territory. But their opponent is just as recognizable because we're playing LeBron one last time. And per usual, he's sending Golden State packing. But while the Warriors season is over, the Nets would be handling business, dropping out Philly in the Eastern Conference Finals, and we're getting a rematch of Brooklyn versus Los Angeles, one of which would bring the NBA a ton of revenue from two huge markets. But this time, things would go a little bit differently. Brooklyn came out hot from the jump and would take a 3-0 lead. And while LA did win game four at home, the series was already over. Steph's finally won his third championship and he's now tied with Kyrie once again. But with still two seasons remaining, there's more than enough time for either player to separate themselves. But Steph's on the move for a third time. He's getting shipped off to Dallas to form a terrifying backcourt duo with Luka. They might just be better than Clay and Kyrie, a question we'd be asking a ton coming the second round. Steph and Kyrie are meeting up once again, and if this is the last time, it might determine who's the better player. But just as they're tied on three championships, this series would develop the same way, dragging all the way along until a game seven. And even here, the competition would stay close. Now the Mavericks do have a four point lead currently, but there's about two minutes left to where Golden State had the chance to come back. We see Steph with the ball with Kyrie guarding him, running the clock out a little bit, comes off the screen, step back, mid-range pull up, and he makes it off the glass. The lead is pushed out to six where Golden State might not be able to return from here, but let's see what Kyrie does, driving it on Steph. Jumps and he misses the close about five, 10 foot shot. And now Steph has the ball once again. Kyrie got him still. He's gonna take the screen from Christian Wood. Passes it to Luca, but Andrew Wiggins guarding him. Luca in the post. Pump fake, pump fake. Goes up with it and he knocks it down. He's still the lead even more. I think Golden State is definitely in trouble. Kyrie working in here, taking his man to the paint. And he gets, oh my God, he gets stripped. Ball to Luka, double screens for him, driving it on Kyrie. Passes to Reggie Bullock, who gets a standing dunk, putting the lead at 10 points. And that was all the Mavs needed, holding on for this final minute of the game. With that being said, Steph has the edge over Kyrie Irving and advanced to the Western Conference Finals. But while Dallas fans should be happy, those smiles wouldn't last long as they're facing Denver. This was a well-oiled machine led by two-time MVP Nikola Jokic. And while giving it the roll on the court, Steph and Luka are getting sent home, leaving us with just one season left for either Kyrie or Steph to pull ahead with one final NBA championship. So with the stakes as high as possible, both players would average up of 30 points and lead their teams to top seeds in the west with the Mavs being first and the Warriors being second we might be getting one more rematch and if so it'll surely be a classic Kyrie for sure wasn't letting Golden State season in anytime soon he's eager to prove he can win without Kevin Durant and if we skip to the second round he's actually facing him he used the motivation he came into this series with and take a commanding 3-1 lead, one of which he'd be holding on to, and advance to the conference finals. But let's not make it all about Kyrie, because Steph was doing some special things with Luka as well. They began the playoffs by not only sweeping the Oklahoma City Thunder, but then beat Denver as well, setting up a stage to face the Golden State Warriors one final time. And while we're getting one last matchup between our favorite players, this one wouldn't be remotely close. Luka would be the star of this rodeo, so he's not only the face of this franchise, but also the future of the league. And their last opponent would be the Boston Celtics, a repeat of the finals this year in real life. Only this time, the Mavericks have Stephen Curry, a complete game changer who's changing his three as we know it. In arguably his most important finals to date, he not only dropped a plethora of threes, but he was also facilitating and created many opportunities for his teammates as well. Once it was all said and done, the Dallas Mavericks are walking away as NBA champions, giving Steph his fourth and beating Kyrie at the end with a 4-3 lead. This makes him the greatest point guard in modern NBA history, but what if we took his teammate Luka on a completely different journey? Click on this video and let's find out together.